My name is Ramsony, and welcome back to Against the Storm, where we are going to be placing our next settlement, and I'm going to be taking some advice uh, from a couple of the comments. I'm going to be moving up to the next difficulty level. This is so that I can attain more rewards. Currently, we are on Pioneer, uh, which is the second level. The sec uh, first level being Settler. Villagers eat less food, so effectively, like, easier than the default. Then Pioneer appears to be the default. Veteran is Black... Oh, not up to Viceroy. Good Lord, not up to Viceroy. We're going up to Veteran first. Blight Rot and Corruption. Recommended for advanced players who want to face additional challenges. We get two fewer embarkation points. There are four negative effects and one positive effect per map. And the hostility multiplier is two times and max hostility 16. Not much of that means a huge amount to me right now, to be entirely frank with you. But I do know that I've seen some stuff talking about Blight Rot and Corruption, and we are going to be dealing with them in this difficulty. That said, where are we going to be placing ourselves? I mean, I, I cut myself off from a lot of our rewards. You can see if I have full surrounding spaces, I get 63 food stockpile at the end of this. But if I put myself in a position where I'm cut off from three of those, but I have very, very quick uh, little trade routes to Abiton and Disnamir. I would get significantly fewer rewards. Right. I mean, I think this is the correct position then. This marshlands gives us, a, like, equidistant uh, space from Oluwap as well as Dismir. Uh, it's also relatively close to the smoldering city itself. It starts building out in this direction, so I can possibly see what this question mark is. I like it. In the area, we do have the production for eggs and meat and insects. So that means that the trappers is going to be particularly good here. And I know that the trappers camp particularly likes having lizards in it because lizards are good at dealing with wildlife. So I think the fact that both of these offer lizards, uh, lizards for us is pretty good, pretty handy. The marshlands are a gatherer's paradise. Gathering speed is increased by 10% for every two workers assigned to gathering camps. Yeah, I mean, you know, it just makes me more confident that we want to get that trapper's camp really early. Uh, and giant organisms, giant resource nodes can be found in forbidden glades. Each glade will have a different one. I am very, very interested in that one. We've also got mushrooms in the tree for common food resource. Small amount of fertile soil. Okay, that may afflict things in a couple of different ways here for us. I think I'm going to go all in on the lizards at the start here, because thinking about the harpies, the harpies are good at cloth work and they are good at alchemy. And right now, the only gathering camp that uses alchemy is the herbalist's camp. And the herbalist camp collects vegetables, I think. I think it collects vegetables, herbs, and berries, none of which are on this map. What I really want is people and beavers, to be entirely frank with you. So we'll embark on this mission. I'm going to take some stone and some clay. We're already starting out with 15 planks as well as 10 wood. Obviously, I'm going to be building a woodcutter very early on, probably two. So let's just forestall our requirement for stone or clay resources, make bricks using those. Uh, we are going to have a little bit of difficulty with making with making fabric here. So I just hope I don't need it so much so early. Findles crossed. Okay, uh, mushrooms are to rain. Plus three to mushroom production in drizzle. That's three extra mushrooms every yield from gathering, farming, or production. Th those are gathered by cutting down trees. Incredible. Especially if we can get beavers and they can double this production, we can actually just have a farm of just eating the mushrooms off the trees, mainly. Looming darkness, uh, negative four global resolve for every hostility level. There's also fog. Active from hostility one, villagers will move 40% slower if they don't have housing. Uh, active from hostility two, and in storm, every dangerous and forbidden glade discovered gives negative two global resolve during the storm. And it is added retroactively as well. That could be a bit threatening. Acid rain. Rain dissolves some of the warehouses transported to your warehouse. Sorry, the resources transported to your warehouse. 
uh, recipes for producing building materials yield few, uh, fewer goods, and cold snap after hostility three. Villages with this effect have plus 50% chance of consuming double the food in a break, unless they have complex food. Okay. Not ideal, sure, but not, 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 not anything I don't think we can deal with here. Let's scaffold down a little place for ourselves. I mean, hang on. Immediately, you haven't just offered me... Yeah, I would have to... I would have to cut into both of these glades if I actually wanted to place a half down in that direction. But the other direction, I only have to break into one glade, one dangerous glade, and I get a whole new hearth about it. Let's actually have a quick look at Black Rot and Corruption. Every recipe in a production building has a Black Rot footprint. This indicates how much pollution will be emitted by creating a certain item. This pollution accumulates, and when it reaches a certain threshold, Black Rot cysts start appearing on the building. The exact amount of accumulated black rot can be seen in the black rot tab in a given building's UI panel. Each cyst lies dormant at first, which brings some positive side effects with it, but during the storm, they wake up and start to corrupt the ancient hearth, indicated by a progress bar above the hearth and the hearth's UI after selecting it. Once the progress bar reaches an end, a negative effect will trigger killing a number of your villagers. The more black rot cysts are active, the faster the corruption progresses. To combat it, you need to build black posts to create a resource called Purging Fire. Black Rot cysts are invulnerable most of the year, but during the storm they open up and become vulnerable. That's when Black Rot fighters can go in and around the settlement and burn them down. Removing a cyst will not only slow down the corruption process, but also remove a bit of the already accumulated corruption from the hearth. The ancient hearth can also be reinforced by building and upgrading smaller hearths in your settlement. Love it. That will become increasingly relevant to us over time, but right now, not really at all. I'm going to also pause and direct people to build the woodcutters camps first here as a priority. So I'm going to tick both of you up to priority two. And I will build a path out in that direction as well to increase people's speed. I'm just going to be sticking on three times speed the entire time, frankly. I think if I stay on three times speed, I might be able to get to the point where I'm just routinely having one settlement per episode. I forgot the name of the girl! Please. I'm so sorry. I'll remember the next time. Cut down. Cut down all those trees. I mean, I kind of want to break into the dangerous grade, like, immediately. But my resources for dealing with whatever... I mean, we've got 20 coal. That's often a common resource for dealing with it. We've got 15 planks. If I build a crude workshop here, just to prepare myself, let's also have a look at our first blueprint. Is Carpenter Brickyard and Leather Worker. Well, that is two-star plank, two-star brick, and two-star fabric, each being offered to us right there. I think I'm going to break into this area and then immediately open up the panel and select one of those. We have safe haven, uh, haven. Uh, negative 40 to hostility for every hub level upgraded to neighborhood or higher. There's also a shady but lucrative deal for 10 amber every time a villager leaves or dies. And advanced fuel for all fuel recipes are 25% faster. I'm almost led here to re-roll. I want something that's more potential right now. Gain 10 jerky for every 10 pie produced. I will say that is a very efficient way to feed the lizards who like pie and jerky. So it's just double food production for them. I'm pretty happy about that. I'll take it. I might not have needed to take that at the time. I actually probably could have waited on that. Yeah, maybe that would have been a clever decision. Okay, I'm also going to start edging these woodcutters camps slightly further up into the brush. I'm also directing all of my resource camps now towards the resource they're attempting to collect. Previously, I thought they were like an entrance in like a theme park game, but now I understand they are actually the path that the villager walks to get to the resource after getting to the camp itself. Two woodcutters camps and 30 wood for 10 resin. That's not going to be enough to solve a quest. Most quests in Dangerous Gra uh, Glades ask you for 16 resin. Complete a glade event in order to get four villages as well as 30 jerky and three parts. I like this. And I am queuing my way up to completing it. Sure. 
Lizard's resolve above 13 for 30 seconds. Especially if I complete this and get the jerky, that shouldn't be difficult at all. In fact, right now they're one off. If I favor the lizards when I get a second race, I will have the ability. Beautiful. Let's do that. It's also another three parts, another 30 meat, another two lizards. Very, very happy with it. Simple tools. I don't like giving away simple tools, but I'm not likely to care about being able to plant crops faster and, and create additional crops. So I will take the simple tools here. Five simple tools gives us 10 planks, 10 fabric, and 10 bricks. But it, it's, it's unlikely I end up popping that mission early. Let's say that. Well, hang on. Natural resources in this environment do include copper. That would give me the ability in my carpenter to make planks and then also use those planks as the creation for the simple tools with copper bars afterwards. It's actually really good. It's really appealing. I'm going to take the carpenter immediately then. Ranch. Okay. Can I feed the mushrooms in the ranch? I cannot feed the mushrooms in the ranch. That's frustrating. I would really like to have the ranch. The ranch has a specialization bonus for the lizards as well. It can be used to produce meat. So if I can mill, you know, like plant fiber or grain into meat, and I can get grain in this environment, it's worth noting. Grain is one of the natural resources we can pick up. It's just unfortunate that it's grain because grain is picked up by the, the foragers camp, I believe. And the foragers camp gets grain, vegetables, and insects. I guess if that turns up early, I would take it. Oh no! What am I talking about? The trapper's camp! I told you how important this is. My apol- oh, Now I'm getting styled on. You're offering me the lumber mill when I've already taken a solution for my planks. Let's think about the druid's hut here for a second, because oil can be important. That's meat to produce the oil. Oil can be used as a efficient fuel for us. And also, it's a pretty good solution to a lot of uh, a lot of quests. Let's do that. Let's take some oil production. Okay, so my carpenter, I'm only going to need to... Let's use our global panels. Let's remember that. Five, five... Five. So I'm setting the production limit for fabric, bricks, and planks, each to five. I'm setting the production limit for crop and building materials. And though I don't intend to make any of these for a while, I'm setting all of them to four because if I make a mistake and I forget something, I would rather they not bankrupt me. Um, simple tools. Let's set you to 16, which is the largest amount I've seen a single event ask for. Oil, we intend to ultimately use oil to fund the entire camp, so I will set you to something ridiculous because we also have three star production for you, so 50. And then coats, let's set you to 25. I don't even know if I'll have anyone that uses you. Incense, let's set you for 25 as well. I know that I already have the lizards who would use that incense for religion. <clears throat> okay, so the carpenter and the druid hut are both asking for the exact same resources, so if I manage to build some fabric... We should be off to the right start there. Unfortunately, I can't really build any fabric, so I'm going to have to wait a little uh, until we actually get the resources to do that. This leaves one person not currently working at the moment. I mean, they, they are building things, so they are actually working still. Come on, let me break in here so I can get some more information. Delectable information as soon as this tree goes down. Come on, buddy. Please. I'm going to set up, like, scaffolding for future paths. Just based on the fact that I have an idle worker and I'd really like him to be doing something. I mean, look, I can tell them directly to just cut through that area, but I also do want them to generally clear this zone so that I have the ability to use the space. Ooh, we don't even actually have to give you a resource. Ooh, baby. Ooh, baby, baby, baby. 
A free roaming war beast makes the forest even more dangerous. Hostility will be increased by 160. And uh, the hunting ground, each newcomer caravan arrives with two fewer villages on board because the creatures of the forest are not enough for the war beast, so it must find other more easily accessible meat. There's also lowers hostility by 50 points, a perk for completing this for a reward. We could also get 30 insects and 20 box uh, boxes. Yeah, boxes of pottery. More than happy to have that. And the working effect is decay. Spawns two to three pieces of living matter upon activation, which I'm also then going to have to get workers to deal with that. So let's take all of our woodcutters out because I believe we're probably going to need them all. Let's put two of you into working the event. Okay, and then we can see two living matters have spawned. So we'll put two of you into working this living matter, giving us cooked and raw roo, uh, food is disappearing at a rate of five every 10 seconds, but it's only active while that's being worked on. And the same event here. We're getting 20 amber and 20 dew for completing this. And the other one is also giving us 20 amber and 20 dew. And this one's giving us 30 insects, 20 lo uh, pottery, as well as uh, negative 50 hostility. I'm over the moon with what's going on here. We also get a bakery that I'm not even going to have to opt into. Hell yes. I only need to have to uh, create flour and I can suddenly make all of the pies and that pie will make jerky. This is an incredible start. This is such an incredible start that I made sure to look across back to my recording program multiple times to make sure, are we capturing this? <laughs> are, the, are, the, are the cameras rolling? Can you make sure that we have a couple backup cams on this one? Because I think this one is headed in a positive direction. There's two large root deposits here, which I can scavenge as well. Also a leech brood mother, so that I can start picking up some meat. Uh, I have one who is not necessarily immediately employed, so I will do that for them. Bleeding trees, plus two to resin production. Do we have good resin production on this map at all? No. So the trees themselves don't produce resin, so we'd have to produce resin via, like, actual transformation processes. That's probably not something I care super huge about picking up as a perk. Uh, I honestly... Let's actually take down the final worker at the moment as well to give them the ability to build the trading post. Because I really should have that. Oh man, I can't wait for these events to just be complete. We're going to get so many resources at the same time. Just pop off this resource as well, get four more villages. We haven't even gone to the first, the end of the first year. Oh, I'm so excited for this run. We're low on food. That makes sense. What with the, the living matters. I believe... <laughs> Oh no. I believe we're about to starve for a little bit, but it should be okay. We're bringing back a bunch of insects which we can eat. Uh oh. Maybe this isn't a good idea. Maybe this was uh, a bit more than I can chew to have bitten off here, perhaps? Okay, so Sahilda's not here yet. Oh, selling mushrooms would be really, really good for us at some point in the future. Jerky as well to Abiton. Great. Can we get a... Can we, can we wrap this up, please? <laughs> I'm very terrified that we're about to <laughs> starve immediately at the start of the run in a way that's going to be very deeply embarrassing to me as a uh, human. As a human. Blade cleared. 30 jerky. That's great. That'll, that'll do it. We did get people, and we did get beavers. I am so pleased to see y'all. Welcome, welcome. Let's favor the lizards in order to get the clan results as well. Oh, that's going to be hard to do in the... Yeah, that's going to be hard to do in the storm, so I'm just going to turn that off rather than wasting resources here. Smoke, uh, smokehouse, rather, for creating jerky at a very quick rate. Now, do I actually want that? No, because my humans and my lizards both eat jerky and pie, and the beaver eats neither. So if I prioritize pie creation instead... 
Bing, bang, boom. I'll have everything I need. Also, we're getting a lot of amber out of these events, which is going to be very helpful when Sihilda arrives, so that I can actually just buy myself a bunch of resources to kind of pad the lower ground. Make sure that I don't end up running out of resources in the same kind of embarrassing way again. Uh, let's also move up these. I'm now going to tell you as well to avoid glades, because I just want you to clear out the top side there. I mean, like, I'll even direct you initially. And you, I'm going to move here and also direct. So thinking about the positioning for the second half, I can't wait super long. I can't wait too long is the problem. The earlier the half is down, the more I'm going to be able to utilize it, the more I'm going to be able to build around it, the shorter the paths between all of the workers and their nearest resting zone. You know, I'll be able to get, you know, an additional 10% global production and then an additional 20% global production. I'll be able to choose my quests based around it. I'm very happy. I love establishing new hubs. But I'd also like it really deeply if it were Kalinia with the previous one. And that would take a lot of effort right now. So what if I offset it up here? What about that? I, I could put it right there. That's fine. Obviously, I'm going to have to wait until the living matter disappears, but it's about to disappear, so... <laughs> yeah, I think I'll do that. Noting that we're not going to be taking the jerky here, I think I should take the bricks and crystallized U production. I need to get a brickyard down relatively early as well. Oh, man. Do I want to... I have a scaffold of a building, uh, like, a, a town in mind. But if I build around it, it's going to be slightly inefficient. But... Uh, like, for instance, that's where I want to put my brickyard at the moment, because I want to make blocks of four. Something like this. Wait, hang on. That's not even block four. What? <laughs> One even over from that. There we go. Right? You can see, I'm ultimately just trying to kind of check the entire path like this. Although I have a bunch of people who will happily utilize these paths at the moment. It's slightly inefficient for the brickyard. <laughs> I'm still going to do it. Okay. So you've got four lizards not working at the moment, so they're doing the building. When I say not working, I do specifically mean that they are free workers, and the game associates that correctly. They are builders. Free workers. Let's tag the lizards. Newcomers are offering me the ability to get extra stone, clay, insects, grain. More uh, more beavers is probably the most appealing one to me initially. Woodcutter's Prayer. Unfortunately, I can't close this scene because it says ethereal. The cornerstone option will disappear if you decide to unpause the game. Unpause the game before choosing it. That's fine. I can I can exit this and look. I thought you couldn't even close that screen. I, I've been uh, misled by my own brain this entire time. Well... We can't educate that many people here, and uh, every three burnt black, uh, black rot cysts loads hostility by 10. When the half is corrupted, you're unable to sacrifice resources. I want to take Woodcutter's Prayer here. We don't have a bunch of wood because we took our woodcutters off of working wood that entire time. We'll lose all of our uh, coal, but I'm okay with that. I want to get the plus one to wood production while it's not costing us that much fuel. Then I'm getting more woodcutters via our beavery. This is resolve is going to be resolving over the course of the next 15. One thing I didn't do yet is build the Carpenter, which is actually going to be continuing our plank production after this point. 
And the reason I haven't done that is because I still can't produce fabric. I still don't have any plant fiber, reed, or leather to produce the fabric with, so I'm going to need this, uh, this, this trapper's camp to go up and get staffed as soon as possible to actually have a chance of using those. Uh, let's set... I mean, brick production here is set to 5, but I'll set it to 25 speci uh, specifically in this building. Lizard Resolve is complete. We now get two more Lizards Resolve 30 meat. Unfavor them. Still need those planks. Alright, Sahilda. Sahilda just has a bunch of fabric. I'm going to buy all of it. That's all I really needed. Plus one to flower production. Flower comes in lots of 10, so plus one to flower production is kind of weak. If I take all of your planks and all of your fabric... Hmm... I'd also like to stock up on some food, but I am about to start getting a bunch of meat, and I do use that meat to make... Jerky? Do I use the meat to make jerky yet? I don't think I use the meat to make jerky just yet. Right? Yeah, no, I can't make jerky. Oh, I should also have a look at the trade routes that I might be able to fulfill here, because what if I just buy something from Sahilda to sell to someone else? The, yeah, insects? I could buy a bunch of insects to sell. Although, actually, I would be buying eggs so that I can make packs of uh, provisions so that I can sell the insects. Maybe that whole order. Which I think we do. It's a great idea. Um, let me give you some extra stone until you're okay with this. That's a lot of stone, but I do have stone on the map already accessible. Thank you for our carpenter. And in fact, we do already have crystallized you, so I'm going to start building some simple tools here. Let's prioritize plank production over the simple tool production, but as soon as you've got 25 planks, which you already have, it's time to start making those simple tools. And you make them out of planks, so if you ever go down below 25, you'll start making the planks first, and then go back to the simple tools. This will give me the ability to start opening the medium and cache, as well as exploring into more of these dangerous glades without much threat. Uh, so I have food. Complex food is what I'm currently really missing. Well, there's the foragers. There's the herbalists as well for herbs, berries, and mushrooms. I do need mushroom collection, but currently on the map, I don't. I will eventually at some point, maybe. Vegetable grain insect. We This only gives me access to grain. This only gives me access to mushrooms. That's the real problem. Each of these is only giving me access to one domain. And then the forest side is giving me access to resin and crystallized dew. I already have access to crystallized dew through the brickyard. As well as just a glut of it at the moment due to the, the early matter events. I need to advance my hub. I think that's one of the next things I want. Have a look at some new orders. Oh wow, really? Okay, so if I have human resolve above 26 for 30 seconds, I can get plus one to co-production. Again, that's only plus one to usually uh, co-production is 10 at a time, so that's just extra 10%. Not bad, but usually coats are not that difficult to make. Uh, basket of pies, 30 pies, as well as two additional humans each settlement. Building materials, though, two wildfire essence, 40 clay, 40 leather, if I give you 10 blanks, 8 brick, and 8, eight fabric. So it pays back more than it takes, except for in planks, but planks is easier for us. We'll take that. Need for clothing fulfilled, and then plus one for fabric. Oh, plus one to jerky production, as well as two additional lizards every settlement. Great, I'm taking that. Very happy to have them around. Let's also move up the cutter camps. Try and help us clear out that zone so it's appropriate for our next half. Which, I mean, can immediately go down right now. 
Wait, immediately? There's roots next to it that I'm going to have to clear out as well. This is kind of annoying still, but I'm doing it. Just set up a warehouse here. Obviously, that has the ability to come down to the bakery, which is going to be important at a point. Uh, I can make flour out of roots, so I'm still looking for a flour production facility. Because I have access to a lot of roots and not anything I really care about doing with them right now. I don't love that I have to build a scavenger's camp over here at some point just to take care of this one root deposit. I know I don't have to. I think I can destroy it if I wanted to. Yeah. It'll permanently destroy the node and not give you any resources. I'm not capable of doing that. My soul will not let me. But... I will complain about it. That's more my vibe. That's more my speed. Still not really satisfied with these camps at all. I almost feel like I'm holding off on this decision now until I actually see a grain or a mushroom camp. I'm not building the forest's hut. That's not important to me. Also, the forest's hut is best... Used to be called, I think, druids something, maybe. But this is best starved by woodcutters, and my beavers are in high demand at the moment. They don't have time for anything else. And let's also shift these woodcutters camps up. And that one can go there, this one can go here. I'm gonna propagate across them the avoid glade option now. Making absolutely certain I'm not gonna have to deal with any sudden unplanned for nasties. And honestly, I think I now need housing most of all. So I can get one human house here, or I could I could pop down two beaver houses. That seems good. Two beaver houses first and foremost. And then I'm gonna flood out this zone with one human house and two lizard houses behind. And then after that, if we also create, ooh, a valved pipe. I'm gonna go pipe, 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 and then just put one valve in the middle of it. Just so that any walker by can decide to completely screw up the entire storage of our main warehouse. Just if they want to, just if they're tempted. Building materials complete. Bonding the expedition, giving me back building materials, which would have completed the next one, sure. I'm honestly just popping both of those so that I have more options after... Uh, after this one choice that I'm still not yet comfortable making. Ugh, that doesn't sound like a strong arguing point right there. Sounds like a mistake. Okay, let's get the second half populated as well. I mean, I am, I guess I am asking people for a lot right now. I've got two of you in a trapper's camp, two of you in a brickyard. Do the two of you in a brickyard really need to be there anymore? How long? No, but for real, how long do you actually need to be here? I highly suspect the answer is not. I mean, them making those additional bricks has been helpful. It's certainly funded my ability to expand out in this area. There's two bricks in the warehouse. There's a number of bricks in the small hearth as well. Some amount, certainly. You'd assume. Obviously, all of these houses as well contain brick. Yeah, okay, never mind. You, you, you're doing Gosh's work there. Uh, we've also got the carpenter, which, you know, again, I really do want to staff those with beavers, but the beavers do have to work on the trees at the moment. Uh, next storm's 36 seconds. Not happy about that. I don't want that. OK, 
Okay, how are our mains doing? I mean, you know, we're running out of jerky. We've got a decent amount of meat and eggs and insects and mushrooms. Yeah. Everyone's significantly slower right now. They're exhausted. They need housing not to be affected by this. I think I'm going to up my wood sacrifice in order to lower hostility here because I still really desperately need my woodcutters to actually be expanding uh, to be expanding as well as to actually gain us wood. So I don't want to take them out of woodcutting at the moment in order to decrease my hostility because I could decrease my hostility by removing people from being woodcutters at the moment, which is contributing currently my six woodcutters are contributing 96 to my hostility, which then would downgrade from the hostility level that was activating fog. I don't want to. Don't make me. <laughs> Please. This, this is a forbidden glade. It's very dangerous, contains a lot of resources, but great amounts of treasure. I think if I actually just have 16 of my uh, tools, I'm pretty comfortable actually just gunning down that direction. And in fact, I'm now going to represent that with my woodcutter's camps. We're also going to be happy to open this. Uh, I'm going to tell them not to avoid glades. In fact, I'm going to tell them default and propagate. There you go. Alohomora. Ooh. Couple new folk to welcome to the settlement. I... I really feel like I need new people, but that is always the case with me. I really like high population games. As I have found out about myself. We found some mushrooms. We finally have a direction to lean, although it's also entirely possible that we find the giant grain in the Forbidden Glade, so I also kind of want to wait until we finish the Glade now. Let's tell you to prioritize that path. Okay, yeah, mushroom production would be ridiculous right now. Ooh. You get four simple tools for... Honestly, a great spread of characters for us. Training grounds. Plus one to lizard resolve for every 70 training gear produced. Considering only the lizards would use it, not a great idea for us. Just the right amount. Villagers with leisure fulfilled have a plus 10% chance of doubling their yields. That's pretty good considering the fact that humans and beavers both can fulfill their leisure. However, there's also steel pickaxes. Plus two to stone production. Gain additional stone from every yield from crafting, gathering, farming, production, etc. We don't really use that much stone is the problem, but this would be my favorite, I guess. I'm taking the well-rested workers instead, though. <laughs> Good tool production. Hey, let's get you all out of the brickyard so you can actually create the houses. Thank you. Let's also move up the woodcutters camps yet again. Gonna try and pay closer attention to that in the future. Should be a very, very useful optimization for us. Ancient hearth, one more home. All it takes is one more home and you may have an upgrade. <clears throat> I now pronounce you an encampment, giving plus two to global resolve. Oh, buddy. This is exactly what I wanted to see. Dead Leviathan. 1,000 charges. Gives you meat, gives you uh, leather, sea marrow, jerky, and crystallized dew. Also, there's a smokehouse here just for straight up making jerky. And the drainage mole. You want meat? I have that! Uh, forest facilities increased by 200 while we are working on it, and all woodcutters and gatherers get a negative 20 penalty to resolve while we're working on the giant beast. So we, just sh we should just use this as time to do everything except for woodcutting and gathering, which is like uh, production of things as well as building. I think I am comfortable with this. 
Do I want to give you 40 meat though? I'm about to get a ridiculous amount of meat in return. I believe I should give you 40 meat. Steel shovels for clay production. I don't care about the clay production. 40 coal versus five ancient tablets. Those sell really well, but I'm also not really using trading routes a lot at the moment. You know, if I wanted to, I could take send it to the Citadel, giving us the Queen's Grace as well as the 20 Amber, and we could kind of... We could... I think we could be a lot quicker about this, because I also have simple tool production. I could start opening up caches for Queen's Grace as well. I think we could actually, like... I think we might be able to kind of, like, do this very quickly. The speed run season, kind of. Yeah, I don't even care about the pottery production! Sure, yeah, I think I'm going that, that direction. Send to the Citadel. There you go, drainage mole. Then everyone needs to be outside of woodcutter camps. They can't be in trappers camps either. Carpenter, that's fine. Crude workshop, that'd be fine too. I mean, brickyard, that'd be fine as well. So let's get two of you in the brickyard. Making crystallas dew from insects. Oh, we don't have spark dew. Oh. Rain Collector is not considered a gathering building, I don't believe. So let's build two Rain Collectors? I don't think I need a second one, but I also want something for people to do right now. Druid Hut would also be a good thing for people to do. Oh, you know what people also haven't been doing just yet that we kind of need them to start doing? Blight post. So I'm gonna set up this blight post here. We're low on fuel. Oh. Oh, we are. Okay, you give negative 20 to the resolve of all woodcutters. Okay. So if I take all of my humans, because I still need woodcutting to be going on right now, apparently. If I take all my humans and get them to cut down wood, and then I favor them, that is enough to get the lizards not to like me anymore. I can't sacrifice anything, unfortunately, at the moment. The event is not, like, we're not even completed delivering stuff to it, so this is going to take a while. Hmm. Which means we will run out of fuel way too quickly. How's my money? Garbage? I have none of it. No money whatsoever. Interesting. Can I get fuel from... I can get fuel from one of the caches that we could open at the moment. Unfortunately, it will take a fair lick of time. Uh, hmm. Well, I mean, part of what I was hoping to do here was create oil using meat, which itself is a foodstuff. I think I might be able to get away with this a little in the meantime, but I need to get some... I need to get some wood first is the problem, because if I can't make any planks, I can't even start this. Scouts are right. Oh, I, I've already sent you there, apparently. Oops. No, give me the money. We can do this. It's going to be hard, but we're pushing through. Okay. Oil production. Online. Make it out of meat. The fire is going out. That's fine. Ish. I mean, literally the second you've created any... Oil, I'm gonna get you to deliver it. Old trader is the trader is alive. Oh, good! I I am I'm so flustered. <laughs> trader has arrived in old Falif. I don't even think I can really save myself with old Falif at the moment, though. Pack of 10 building materials gives us the ability to get plus 10% to villagers' moving speed. I like that. 
and purging fire, burn at least 20 black rot cysts for increased coal production. I love that. So human resolve is still low. This mission, we've run out of meat for this mission because I gave the meat to the goddamn oil. I'm gonna get the two of you to deliver that meat as quickly as you possibly can. And I'm gonna tell the druid stuff that it cannot take any more orders. And get it to deliver the stuff immediately. Scads are idle in the drainage mall. That is like the worst case scenario for us right now because we're just dealing with the negatives without having any of the positives or actually exploring it. We'll take some humans out of doing the camp stuff that I was getting them to do. Y'all can now leave the brickyard, I guess, as well. I mean, unless you can just make some bricks, which is also kind of cool. Uh, Blight post, that's where I'm going to want to put lizards. Because they work better in hot conditions. Although they're also going to want to use fuel to make the... The purging fire, they want to use wood, oil, sea, marrow, or coal. Yeah, they want to use all of the fuels. Okay, at least we're starting to finally work on the drainage mall event. Uh, this also should now probably just give me the ability to take the herbalist camp. Scribe Provisioner Clothier. The Provisioner for the ability to make flower, temple monastery, and tavern. Uh, so the monastery gives leisure to two people as well as religion to two people. So I think the monastery is probably our best choice here. Thank heck we've got y'all making those again. Very pleased with that. Um, I mean, we're storing the smokehouse or the bakery. We still have free workers. Please restore the bakery. That's going to be important. I just don't think I have the ability to buy anything from Valuf right now. As much as I desperately want to. Druid Sot, you may now make oil out of all of the meat because we have enough meat in the drainage mall now. That's great. Get your meat. Unfortunately, there's not that much of it. Uh, this scavenger's camp. Fill them out. Okay, yeah, we're running a little thin at the moment. And things are a little tight, difficult, and uncomfortable. But this, I believe, is just the... The night before the dawn. The dark before the dawn, so as to speak. Go on fuel again. Yeah, that tracks. Uh, you are currently, it looks like, delivering oil. Oh boy. Am I making too much of anything? I've got a lot of leather. What can I use my leather for? Um, I'm kind of surprised I can't just squeeze the leather for oil. Can make mushrooms into flour as well as the sainted roots. Simple tools are almost done as well. Ooh, temple's coming up. That's a uh, hostility decrease by 100 just for having this fully staffed. So damn keen to see that. We did it. Drainage mall event is complete. We are now just taking our resources from it. 
So that now gives me the ability to put everyone, uh, everyone back in their buildings if they want. Okay. Let's hop you all out of the brickyard. Let's get two of you in the blight post. And the beavers. The beavers. Two of you are in the trapper's camp at the moment. That is terrifyingly sad. Let's take the scavenger's camps out there and then put them in the trapper's camp. There we go. Although that trapper's camp, I think, might actually already be dead. Uh... Where are my other... Oh, they're all in the carpenter at the moment. They'll have run out of resources to actually use from the carpenter anyway, so... Let's move the... Cutters camps to positions where they're actually expanding our current terrain. And set them again to avoid glades for a while. Woo! Yeah, we made it through. We absolutely made it through. Because now, we are about to feast on this big baddie here. Actually, I should also cut down those trees. Uno momento. Uh, let's move this woodcutter's camp to do this job. And get an herbless camp there. Yeah, here's the general idea. I just want this dead leviathan to give us all of the meat that I need basically for the rest of our time here. As well as a bunch of other resources in the jerky and the leather and the sea marrow and the crystallized dew. I cannot wait. The meat itself is going to be making our fuel as well as our food. So I, I wouldn't even be against having a third camp here. At all. I am so glad I have enough lizards to staff them. Not enough simple tools to break that, unfortunately. I need another woodcutter, I think, at this point. Yeah, let's put another one down in this corner. There we go. One of you there. This blind post is also using a lot of our wood at the moment in order to create the Persian fire. But that will be important in the future. I want more wood production as well, though. Uh, get 40 water skins for every point obtained through high resolve is the only one there that is even likely to trigger for us. Four more beavers. It's exactly what I want. So I can replace that woodcutter with a beaver and this woodcutter with beavers. The herbalist camp is an alchemist's area, which people aren't. So unfortunately, the best we can do there is the lizards. Especially right now, we want that to be active because mushrooms after rain is active, giving us plus three production in the facility. I really want to clear that so I can just build the path. Um, honestly, I'm probably not going to use that farming field at all. Which does feel like a waste, admittedly. Yeah, one, two, three. One, two, three. There we go. Let's house some lizards. Many builders to currently be working on that at the moment. And in fact, we have now fewer because I've moved them over to the Leviathan, but I do think that is the highest of our priorities at the moment. Now, the lizards are about to get a bump in resolve from being housed as well as being housed in their own specific housing. So I believe if I give them lighter treatment and favor them, I can pop the next mission. Which should bring more lizards to us, which should help with all of the, you know, looting that we're doing of the dead leviathan there. Two additional lizards with every newcomer camp. Great to see. We've burnt one blight rot cyst so far. Mm, 
I don't have the ability to make any additional camps at this point. We are, like, very much running pretty max maximum uh, capacity here at all times. I'm very, very happy about it. Feels efficient. Feels good. I mean, honestly, I should just have a look down here for that kind of reinforcement if I need it, right? Our reputation is 7. Our Queen's Impatience 1.3. And this is the higher difficulty from the one that we were previously playing. Come on, build the houses! Oh, I have no workers for you! <laughs> yeah, that makes sense, I guess. Uh, I could take the herbalists off of that camp at the moment, but I also do want them to just exhaust the grass caps so I can just take that camp entirely away and never have to worry about it again. I also have an unactive camp at the moment, which, yes, I could just use to make parts for something else, but I don't have any workers to work those camps, so what do we even do? This ancient hearth needs four more people to live near it. It needs four more normal decorations and four more aesthetic, four more comfort and four more aesthetic, that is. Uh, so... What about... That's four more comfort, and then I'll put a... Wait, there's a road sign on the other side of that. That's poor urban planning on my part. Put two bushes there, and then a flower bed in between them, and then I just need to have one more position for... Yeah, a lamp. And the final thing that I need is housing for four more. Pop those beavers down. That'll take care of that. Actually, I only want to loot those mushrooms in drizzle, if possible. So I will unemploy those workers there. A kiln making coal. Do I have a kiln? I thought I had a kiln. I do not have a kiln. I have a druid's hut that I am kind of treating as though a kiln. Oh, my mushroom production was ridiculous last season. It's actually the reason that we still eat. Holy heck. Solithio the Ancient. Welcome to my camp. Um, I mean, honestly, I could just buy some happiness if I bought leisure or religion right now. So, I could just buy a bunch of incense if I really wanted. Kind of want a bunch of planks and bricks as well, just so that I can kind of skip over the process of making them right now. And just skip to utilizing them. We could also, however, let's hang on. Before we do this, plus 25% to drizzle duration. That's pretty good. Plus one to coal production is not bad, but we don't have any coal production, I don't believe. Specialized, wait, no, we do have one method of coal production. It's all the way over here. Is it not? No, the smokehouse doesn't do coal production. Do we, wait, do we actually not have coal production? That's kind of funny. I really thought we did. Okay, um... Woodcutters move 20% faster is not bad, especially considering uh, how much larger the environment is for us right now. Yeah, I'm going to take that, but I then think I will take the, the planks and the bricks and the, the incense for my 43, and I will offer to remove incense until you accept this deal. Beauty. Two free workers at the moment, so... Building shouldn't be going extremely quickly for us. We are about to have to deal with a storm that I'm not very comfortable leading up to. Although we do have a decent amount of, thankfully, uh, purging fire here. So here's, here's one of our problems, right? 10 wood versus 4 oil. I make 5 oil from 2 meat. 
but there's no equivalent between meat and wood. So I don't know, like, is this a super inefficient trade for me? Is it a very efficient trade for me? Where am I at? I don't think there's anything else I need from you, Sulfur. I think we're all good, mate, actually. Yeah, I think we're all good, eh? Um, hmm, yeah, this seems like it'd definitely be wood versus meat. It's, it's meat on this production, and then meat makes oil, which then makes jerky. Seems like it's ruthlessly inefficient. Um, do I even make jerky anywhere else? No, just there. Also, pies. Pies made from flour. Flour made from the provisioner made from... Okay, actually, this is this is the path. You can max a, a maximum of 100 flour at any one time. And here I will tell you, you can make pies and you can make them out of, uh, yeah, I guess any of those ingredients you can find. You know what? I'm running this through. I know that we're at an hour now, but I, the, I mean, the last episode was 30 minutes short as well. So this is me making off of that. Let's say that, but uh, I'm gonna run this through. I think I can complete this camp within like the next 10 minutes if I do the correct decisions. I cannot do the correct speak though, evidently. Well, the correct decisions may have. Seems like religion's really helping the humans and the lizards here weather the storm. And thank heck we're back into a good season. Lost in the world, silent looting. Be cautious when opening abandoned caches. Every open cache lowers hostility by 15 points, sure. Still don't have a track on kiln or luxury, so there's no reason for me to choose between those just yet. Newcomers! These have additional lizards for us, thankfully. I'm gonna take the grain because I can use that for making oil if I wanted to. And in fact, it would get me away from using all of my meat for that and I need my meat for other things at the moment. So yes, here. Although we'll only have one of you making it at a time because I don't need that much upkeep. Then I can put two of you into the other trapper's camp, thankfully, at the moment. This should also unlock the smokehouse to start being able to run meat through. Uh, this woodcutter's camp, I kind of want to move as well. Ooh, I'd love if I could put it there. I mean, I kind of can if I just knock out these two roads. Oh, sorry, this was... Right, I was moving one. There you go. Uh, let's also refill the herbalist camp at this point, noting that we are in the drizzle season again, so we are getting the plus three for mushroom production. Move the scavengers camp closer to the root deposit it's attempting to exhaust. Great. I think everyone's doing pretty well right now. I think I just need to let them run. Let him execute for a while. Let's also move these woodcutters camps a bit further over to where they are currently working. I mean, this one? Yeah, we should expand up there as well. Smell to rain, rain mill. So that's the ability to get the flower production off the hook if I really wanted to, but do I really want to? Or I could get three star copper, belt, uh, copper bar production, which I have none of. I don't even know if I have any copper though. Ale, skewers. I'm gonna take the ale from the brewery there as well. Noting that I can give people leisure, so why not make a brewery? Also, I'm gonna set us up with a hub here for the plus two global resolve. How far are you off? Yeah, you're just off by building these two buildings for the next level. 
from encampment, which I think is district. Or is it neighborhood? Neighborhood next, then district? Neighborhood, neighborhood. But later, district. All right. Yeah, we'll exhaust that reliably within time as well, thankfully. My gosh, the amount of resources that we're getting out of this Leviathan, I am over the moon about this. I kind of want to just put more camps there, just exclusively exploiting it. Uh, okay, so oil production is limited right now by the fact that we have more oil than we need. So I'm going to tell you not to burn coal, not to burn marrow. Definitely don't burn the marrow, please. My god, don't burn wood at all either. Just burn oil. So that should start burning oil at a faster rate. I will leave you idle here just as a backstop to make sure that I don't run out of oil at the worst possible moment. I wish I could move this bakery. One thing I should be looking at a little bit here is the light rot screen, which I haven't even actually expected, uh, expected, inspected this entire time. So, industrial buildings produce blight rot. The higher the blight rot footprint, the faster blight rot cysts will grow. Once the storm starts, they try to corrupt the hearth, and you prevent that by building blight posts and assigning blight finders. If they cross over the 60 threshold here, Oh, so it looks like this building can have three cysts, and each of them will corrupt the half by 60. So the first cyst gives it blight rot grows on the structure, meaning there's no safe way to destroy the building, so I just wouldn't be able to destroy the building. Uh, workers move 20% faster from the strange pollen that affects the craftsmen in the building. And then the final level is workers have a plus 25% chance of doubling their production. Ridiculous. Considering the fact that... What's our, what's our blight resist on our hearth here? 1,450. Um, I think, I think the correct thing is to identify buildings that you are fine. Because like, if this building only ever contributes 180 each storm, then I can have you know, like eight buildings do that without popping blight rot here. If I tell the carpenter, you are more than welcome to build as many cysts as possible, and the druid's hut that you are more than welcome to build as many cysts as is possible. Actually, you know what? Probably not that hut. Um, who else needs to know something like that? I mean, definitely the bakery. Probably the Provisioner as well. There we go. Bakery, Provisioner, and that. All exempted. I'm starting to get some herb, but where am I even getting the herbs from? Not entirely certain. Also, we definitely have, yeah, crystallized you for being able to make these now, so... We should restock the Carpenter. I want to see this number going up season over season. I want to see meat used for fewer things so that it actually does number up. I can't even make enough jerky for everyone to eat jerky at the moment. When I make pies as well though, that'll help. Because uh, when I make pies, I accidentally make jerky too. See, Hilda told me how in a secret cookbook. Humans and lizards are about to start having, like, real resolve gains here. Just as soon as this pie starts getting actually delivered. Okay, let's move woodcutter's camps further out as well. This one, I think I'm now comfortable you opening that glade. And in fact, prioritize opening the entire direction there. Stonecutter's camp, sorry, scavenger's camp has nothing nearby. We'll say that. Twice if you'd like, but it'll be alive both times. I'm gonna have the world's worst positioning by doing that right there. 
Am I actually gonna force? Oh gosh. No, I move human home to. Wait. Scavenger camp go there. Human home go here. Scavenger camp go there. Perfect. Ideal. Everything's okay and right with the universe again. New zone. You'll accept oil to complete this quest. Great, we have someone who's ready to make more oil afterwards, and this will give us a converted totem of denial. Counts as four decorations of its type, which is harmony, and the totem of denial uh, gives a global resolve bonus of something. Some amount. It will not tell me. Uh, I can't sacrifice goods in the hearth while I'm working on this, but the storm's duration is increased by 100% while I'm working on it. Oh, no, 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 not while I'm working on it. That's if I fail to work on it. Hey, let's take one of you out of the provisioner to work on the Totem of Denial as well, right? Ooh, there's large areas for the grass cat mushrooms over here. That's going to be so good for the mushrooms after rain. Oh, that's great. There's a cookhouse as well for just making skewers, biscuits, and pigment. Large abandoned in cash, just in case I need some... I mean, some herbs, and some meat, and some incense, and some ancient... All of those are very useful for me, actually. Like, surprisingly useful. Almost disconcertingly useful. <laughs> that Leviathan is basically exactly where the hearth would have to be if I wanted to put down another one. Alas. Uh, still haven't found the the solution. What I'm doing with the whole uh, next next order here. I'm gonna say I'm more likely to end up with a kiln than coal. Excuse me. Two hubs to neighborhood, and you'll give me plus two to uh, mushroom production. Yes. So simple for us to complete that. 22 beavers for at least 30 seconds. Fulfill education 50 times is difficult, but I might just be able to buy 50 scrolls. And then this gives us plus two to pie production, plus three to beavers resolve, and the, 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 the other thing as well, which I don't super care about, but I also don't really want to build, uh, you know, the ability for the lizards to brawl just because they want to. Um, Looking at my hearth now, I currently can't sacrifice stuff in it, right? Because, yeah, I'm working on an event that prevents me from sacrificing. Wait, hang on. I didn't. I kind of forgot that I was building up here as well. That's okay. Fuming machinery is offering to destroy everything within a tentile radius, including my monastery. The, the rude and shows a bit of a tood. I think I need to use some bricks or some oil to solve this problem here. No way to solve a problem like oil. Although I'm gonna need some workers free to actually do the job, so we'll see that in just a bit. Um, I mean, one thing I could do really if I wanted is just disengage a couple of our, not even all of them, just a couple of our woodcutters at the moment. Negating the greater threat, the negative two to resolve during the storm for every dangerous or forbidden glade that I have opened. I do like the centralized hub hub it is a hub of hubs Sahilda what do you have for us we've mushrooms and roots we've got a bunch of stuff but you not so much eggs so that I can make provision packs but I don't really care about them right now Family gratitude and additional uh, additional 40 water skins for every full for every reputation point earned through high resolve, which we are earning more and more of over time as we continue fulfilling people's 
uh, deepest, darkest, secret desires. They're so secret, in fact, that they have eight of them, and they are shelter, housing, jerky, skewers, religion, brawling, pickled goods, and pie. Honestly, if only we could all be so simple and just have eight goods that we get to look at and go, have I fulfilled this recently? No? Okay, let me fulfill that and see if I feel better. I'm kind of treating myself like that recently, where I, if I realize, looking back at my past couple of days and my schedule and my calendar, oh, I haven't gone outside in a while, maybe I should do that, because I'm feeling bad and no part of my body is saying it's because I haven't gone outside, but maybe... I'll tell you. A lot of the time, it does turn out I really did need to go outside. I still haven't got a dog myself, but I do almost think of it as a, as a phenomenon of taking myself for a walk. Like, I... It's easier for me to imagine doing routine self-care things like that when I think about doing them for another thing or person or being or, you know, dog in that instance, and then transpose that feeling back to myself rather than just try and start it. Hey, it works, all right? <laughs> it's adaptive. Let's rebuild this cookhouse. This event's got a uh, one minute ten. This event's got four minutes until it'll blow up. That's fine. We are going to be able to complete it. We got enough oil for it. Great, great, great. Jutsart, you're making enough oil. Yeah, you're doing well. Uh, do you want some support? Even if you don't. There you go. Cop some support. Mmm, some copper production actually available. So oh no, we're halfway through the drizzle season. I'm not going to be able to use the mushrooms this season. Oh well. I think we'll be fine. So this is three global resolve we're getting for everyone right now. Very happy to see it. Let's move this scavenger's camp to here. So small drawing city is reached. This still needs... I mean, honestly, I just need to complete the housing requirements of everyone right now. Because I have a lot of free workers who are capable of building the houses, and I have a lot of free resources that are capable of being the houses. Human house. Two more of human house. Lizard house. Ooh, I... Where's my fabric production? Yeah, it's still just in the crude workstation. That's kind of what I'd feared there. Um... Let's tell you to make up to 25, because you are my only dedicated fabric production at the moment, unfortunately. Cellar, that makes wine, which we could use to make the luxury in order to fulfill... Oh, no, we took the other option in dirty work, so never mind. Can't use that to fulfill anything. Going out here at the smokehouse, making a reasonable amount of jerky. I think I can probably unemploy you from there, to be entirely frank. Um, and use the meat that you're using instead to make pies. And then those pies make all of the jerky. And then everyone has pies and jerky. And honestly, I could probably take this building apart if I really wanted to. Uh, incense? What's my best incense production? That's in the druid's heart. Actually, it's the same in the druid's heart and the smokehouse at the moment. So the smokehouse could make our incense, giving us some religion. We can use the roots for that. That's actually, it's a lot more appealing now that I know I can use the roots for it. Yeah, sure, go make some incense. Sounds incredible to me. Simple tools are now up. I have six, 17 of them available, so I can now go open this large amount in cash. Uh, which it does have meat, it has incense, it has herbs, it has ta tablets. All things that I do want, but do I need any of them? Because I already, like, I want all of those because they fit into my economy really well at the moment. And they fit into my economy really well at the moment because I have a lot of those and I've been planning around them. Um, I don't need to sustain a number higher than 100 for the flower at all times, I don't believe. Giving us another free worker, thank you. I, 
I mean, I didn't make the first bakery is the problem, so I don't have the blueprint for this, so I can't just suddenly create a second bakery. Though I wish I could. Okay, we have more housing over here, so now I need two more comfort and four more... I mean, I can get four aesthetic in a single dose here if I just put down the garden. Okay, and then I'll take out those two spaces and I will pipe the garden over to the bakery. The bakery exhausts its fumes into the garden, which uh, is like a, a, a carbon capture project. Hey, we're in a fantasy universe. It works here. Uh, two, yeah, that literally just allow them to be built, please, and then we'll be fine. Uh, now, I do have a bunch of water skins and pottery from a bunch of random different outcomes, so I could make a bunch of ale as well. I think this is a good idea. Let's get ourselves a additional brewer. Settle up a brewer. Uh. I mean, again, I will move this over, but this is largely just because I really want that to be neat. Rather than being optimal, unfortunately. I will admit when it is that case, but I'm, like, unless it starts killing me, I'm not going to optimize out the things that make me comfortable. <laughs> that's, that's, that's about the limit that I have on, on min-maxing in games. Sure, I'll I'll <laughs> I'll do it when it is appropriate and there is a reasonable leverage between what is needed and the outcome it is asking from me in terms of play sense. Like, you know, if a game always wanted you to play aggro, I would just not play that game because I don't like playing aggro all of the time. If a game required me to be absolutely perfect. I would probably not want to play it in the first place, which is one of the reasons that I, I highlighted so much as I was doing the, uh, as we rather were doing the take a peek for this, uh, that you have the ability to move buildings, that you have the ability to deconstruct things for the same cost that they gave you, and that all of the paths could be made for zero and then re uh, reconstructed and stuff like that. Because to me, that is huge. It is what turns a game like this from something I don't want to even possibly engage with in the first place to a game that I have not been able to put down for the last multiple weeks. And it seems the same for many of you. I was, by the by, I was ex I, I, exceptionally, extremely, I just keywords in my head at the moment, please forgive me. I, I was very, very elated to see the response to the first video. The first video being the one in which I laid out in the very first couple of seconds, like, hey, this is what this kind of game is. Here's why it jives with me. Specifically that I really, really like the optimization and processes and kind of like build management processes and, and, and build order and all of those kinds of things. And the resource management effects of an RTS, but then as soon as anyone sends an enemy at me, I just don't want to play the game anymore. Um, I'm so, like on a strange level, kind of elated that that is a relatable feeling. Because <laughs> I, I would mostly just kind of lump it. Like, I, I entered, like, you know, Command & Conquer tournaments for a little bit of time there as well, because I was just like, I really, really love Command & Conquer, and then I would just get swept very, very quickly. And so some part of me was like, I don't know, is... What game should I be playing? Turns out it's Against the Storm, and it comes out in 2021. Beavis Resolve is low. How dare they. They've lost faith in me. Also got Kiln! The ability to make coal. Great, love it. That's gonna be a another one of our missions complete as well. The advanced outpost, by the way, that should be coming up soon when we complete the final two aesthetics down here. So that is two more points of resolve very quickly coming in for us. Uh we are we still making simple tools reasonably? 
We kind of are, but we seem to also be prioritizing the planks still very high because we use them to make the... So we're alternating back and forth a lot. Honestly, that's kind of fine at the moment. Yeah, I don't need to fix that. We still need that. Okay, there's the advanced outpost next level, giving us, well, a bunch of planks, as it turns out. So that should get us back on track for making only more useful things for a while here. Uh, we don't need to provide more leisure. We don't... Ah, uh, education we do need to. Our people need some education. <laughs> I mean, look, it is actually maintaining the spirit of the song because we are basically just doing that so they will become efficient workers in our system. We are building this so that we can crush the individuality out of each of these individually, turn them into a perfect profit-making machine. That profit, for us, is food stockpiles and rain punk machinery that we then use to upgrade our metal level and come back here. Yeah, I can, look, I can see why that didn't replace the original. I can see why that interjection didn't make its way into the canon version of that song remembered by people, but it is the one that I will remember because it's useful to this instance. <laughs> Let's move you over. Take out. Another one of those cats there, great. Give me some more people to work with. This woodcutter, move over here. Let's also tell them all to avoid glades and propagate that across again. Don't want to have to deal with another one randomly. Safe haven, 30 meat every time a villager leaves or dies, so we chomp them. Uh, I'm gonna take safe haven, negative 40 hostility for every hub upgraded to neighborhood or above, so we'll just get negative 80 hostility immediately. Oh, newcomers as well. Definitely need your. And there we go. We have made enough fabric, so we don't need to continue creating that. We've got a lot of free workers at the moment to start creating the buildings we rely on again. Y'all, where are those tools at? I, they must have been delivering them literally at the time, right? Yeah, they were. Okay. Um, gonna loot that for money and reputation. And I did just build the kiln, so now I need to stock you to use... We have a ridiculous amount of wood, so now coal is gonna be the way that I power our hearths. Also fill up the temple. Great. Filling up the temple has given us a 25% uh, uh, longer burn rate for good sacrifice in the hearth. I mean, packs of building materials as well. I'd probably best make those in the makeshift posts. Jorg! Welcome, Jorg. Herb production, farmers carry additional items, ale production, all of that's kind of garbage for me, Jog. Jog brass tax. Uh, what can you give me that other one can't? Biscuits, skewers, jerky as a backup, just in case. Bunch of pie as well. That is too much. Well, I'm going to take out the pie and the jerky, the stuff that I can make myself, and I will give you 30 amber and as much sea marrow as you require to fill out this price. We are now rolling up on one hour and 30 minutes, and I'm starting to feel a little less secure about my choice. Oh, we're going to wrap this up in the next 10 minutes. It's going to be completely fine. Yeah, of course it is. Mm. Building materials, though, I need to make 15 of. You know what? I almost never do this. I'm gonna make a second carpenter. I'm gonna put it right next to the first one so that they can look across at one another and kind of, you know, have a healthy rivalry that bolsters both of their performance. Oh, I could get four machinery as a Citadel resource from opening that cache. I don't want to end this game until I open that cache for that then. That seems very, very important to me. 
I'm gonna have this inherit the exact same instructions from the other one. My humans are so happy! My... My humans do not... It's me deciding the level of, uh, of, of joke to tell there, and then uh, backing out. My humans are really happy though. They're so, they're, yeah, they're actually ecstatic. We're just gonna get the, the reputation in time. I'm not even gonna finish the dirty work mission. I almost wish I'd made people mad there at the very end so that I would have the ability to actually wait and get the formal machinery, but the settlement is complete. Also, by the way, like literally five minutes before the end, I was like, oh no, this is going a lot longer than I thought. End. We've got a win. We had 14 reputation, 11 impatience left. That is all the impatience required until the end of the game. Got it. Uh, six orders were completed, seven da uh, dangerous events. Um, dangerous events. Okay, wait, hang on. Kind soul for no villagers died, giving us some extra score. There's also unity, no villagers even left the town. Slight smile, impatience stayed below six for the entire game. Just in time, we finished the game before year eight, and just in time. What's that referring to? And town, we finished with, uh, finished with at least 40 villages. We also have the completed deed, a real challenge, win a game on veteran or higher, win a game with at least 25 lizards, lizard settlement, and trade goods worth 3,000 amber. So I, I guarantee that the fact that we have completed those deeds is going to give us another level up here as well. Ooh, pipe ending, thank you. Uh, it's gonna be handy, I actually like using those. So, new Citadel level up here gives us new Citadel upgrades as well as a tool shop for producing simple tools at a three-star rate and then barrels and water skins at a one. Uh, brick oven for making pie at a three-star and one-star coal and incense. There's also a grill, three-star skewers, but one-star for copper and ale. Vliss Greybone is a new trader. She might have tools, luxury items, building materials, and perks for sale. And she likes to buy packs of goods, cooked food, metal, building materials, fuel, and tools. There's also mist pierces, a cornerstone. You are allowed to use the legendary mist pierces. With such a rare gift at your disposal, the queen's expectations are high. The content of glades will be revealed, but each revealed glaive increases the queen's impatience by 0.5. And then there's also prayer book, another cornerstone. Scouts work 25, sorry, 10% faster on glade events for every firekeeper assigned to a hearth. Neat. So that's like a, a like a like expansion and exploration strategy at the same time. I love those. So first on headquarters here would give us unforeseen riches, permanent 1% boost to the chance of obtaining double yields. That's that seems really powerful. Cause it's it's 10% by default on someone who already likes their job. We also get another level of it afterwards. Embarkation uh bonuses you choose have 20% more resources. We could get both of these at the same time. We could also get Queen's Patients have one additional option to choose when choosing blueprints as rep. Absolutely, that's super important. Allows you to pay amber to reroll blueprints offered to you each year. Embarkation of coal and oil available to us. I'm going to be taking this one, I think. Yeah. Permanent negative 2% to the impatience and also the ability to reroll with amber. And then, in the next episode. We're gonna set up our next building. There is a haunted forest all the way down here. Dangerous and forbidden glade warnings are disabled. Unfortunately, it looks like I would have to overlap in one space in order to get it, but it does give us 18 for the artifact citadel resources. There's also rainpunk technology over here. Machinery, rather. A total of 13 I could get. Hostility does not increase with each growing year, but it does increase per villager. I'm a little worried about that because of how much villager I do is. How much I is or am. I like it when there is people. And this is not that. 
I might do the Haunted Forest, but that is going to have to be decided at the start of the next episode. And until then, my name is Mr. Rhapsody, the name of the game has been against the storm. The series playlist is up at the top left, YouTube recommendation down below, streaming pass on the names of the people so generously supporting the Republic on patreon.com slash absolutely plays at or above the thank tier. And a special thanks this episode to Tristan. Hopefully you all have been enjoying yourselves and hopefully see you all next time.